top structure that controls the anarchy level, isn't that just some type of contained system within itself? Why should we, as just normal everyday people, be worried about this? Well, the general public, uh, as you probably know, is n not concerned about this, but uh, uh, they should be because all kinds of things, all aspects of their lives are influenced by these people. They're the movers and shakers of the world. Um, there's some disinformation out there that I need to clarify, and that is uh, the, the misunderstanding that's common out there is that this man, Adam Weishaupt, which was a pseudonym, a name that he had taken, actually, started the Illuminati. Uh, he did uh, create a modern structure for it. He was paid by these families to create a modern structure. But he didn't originate the Illuminati. The Illuminati goes back thousands of years before him. And the reason why I mention this is that uh, if we go back into antiquity, we will see that there were certain families that uh, were deified as gods, like Pharaoh, Alexander the Great. Uh, maybe some of the viewers don't know that Alexander the Great believed that he was descended from gods. Genghis Khan, who still worshipped in Mongolia, these powerful families believed they were gods, and they uh, controlled through their priesthoods in these mystery religions their, uh, the people that were uh, subservient to them. Um, they never wanted to relinqu relinquish power. They networked together, and over history, you can never find any point in history where they gave up their power. What they did is, is they did a lot of sleight of hands and, and uh, went underground or behind the scenes and let other people become front men, but they've still stayed in power. Uh, you can see a lot of, um, I give a lot of evidence of that in my Bloodlines of the Illuminati book. Um, just some everyday examples that I ran into is, as a boy, you know, I met Henry Cabot Lodge. And someone who would read uh, American history would know about John Cabot um, exploring the United States, which was of the Italian Caboto family. This is an ancient family, and yet you can see their influence in history all down through the years. Um, recently there was a book, uh, Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Well, I say recent, it's not been s recent, recent, but uh, it became a bestseller. And then the authors uh, made a, a trilogy of books, mm, Messianic Legacy and, and uh, The Temple and the Lodge. and. Uh, Pageant and Lay and Lincoln were the the uh, authors of the that trilogy of books, and they go in and discuss the how all of the royalty and aristocrats of Europe are descended from one single bloodline. Now, of course, <laughs> um, then when you go to look at our presidents, you find that uh, eleven of our presidents, at least eleven are part of that bloodline. At least 11 presidents are descendants from European royalty. Of the, right, the Merovingian dynasty, at least 11. And um, a man recently, uh, you know, David Icke, you may have heard of him, yes. says that he has the, the genealogy charts to show that all of our presidents were related. I have... Um, uh, in, in the talks that I've given in the last couple of days here in Austin, I showed a uh, genealogy chart that I have, which shows 12 of the American presidents very closely related. Okay, Fritz. Well, you talked about how these Illuminati uh, families, when they have power, and we can see that, then they go into hiding. Uh, most people would say that the Templars, the Knights Templars, were one of these Illuminati structures. Could you explain basically how they supposedly went into hiding? Because you hear about the Templars, they had quite a long reign, and then uh, the French turned against them, and then they were outlawed by the Pope, and then they just disappeared out of history. Right, and, uh, but they didn't. Although the Pope outlawed them, 
they were able to flee and it, initially they went to places in Spain and Portugal and from there they uh, boarded ships and they sailed to Scotland and there was a decision burn helped the Scottish gain their independence and then became very prominent in the affairs of Scotland. Well, you know, Fritz, I saw the movie Braveheart, and I don't remember them being any Templar Knights in that movie. <laughs> yes, that's true, but uh, the movie ended before the Battle of Bannockburn. Oh, all right, I understand now. Okay. Well, Fritz, now that we know basically a little bit about the Illuminati and about how they structure their system, can you give us a little bit of the mindset of these Illuminati families? I mean, why do these families, these 13 families and other families, feel that they have the right or the authority to control almost every aspect of our lives? Um, these families, uh, since antiquity, have believed that they were gods. And, of course, they have been worshipped in many periods as gods. Um, and they continue to pass that prideful belief uh, down gener er, from one generation to another. They believe that they're, they're a superior being. Oftentimes, when I've uh, seen quotes by these people or heard people relate what and they heard, th um, you see that they refer to us as ants or cattle. And that's, they basically have the idea that they were born to be gods and rule us, and, and we were born to serve them. Okay, so they, were, so they felt that they were gods and they were worshipped as such in ancient times, but with the rise of Christianity and things such as the Inquisition and maybe even the Reformation, shouldn't have we, the people of history have stomped all of this out? They made a decision that... Uh, they would use uh, Christianity for their own ends. So they established churches that they themselves controlled and they went behind the scenes and uh, set up a lot of fronts. So what you see, for instance, as proof of what I'm talking about is at the end of World War II, there was commission sent around Europe to examine all of the churches and cathedrals that had been damaged by the bombing and they found something like 80 percent of these churches had hidden uh, cult altars underneath the Christian altar um, that wasn't exposed until the, they were damaged. In other words what was was happening was is these churches were built on ley lines and the satanic rituals had been secretly practiced in these Christian churches all down through the Middle Ages and up to, to present times. These were sacred sites that the churches were built on. In fact, some of them were built on very uh, sacred um, Druid sites and things like this. And so the Christian churches were simply uh, functioning as a front so that these people could do uh, their human sacrifices and so forth in secret. And of course then they became uh, pillars of society with their multiple personalities. They could have a front personality that was the ideal Christian and uh, on the Sabbat on Friday night they could be sacrificing somebody and perhaps on Sunday morning they could be the reverend that was giving the ser sermon. Uh, there's a, uh, a number of other proofs that one can, or, or evidences of what was going on. If you go throughout Europe, you'll see a large number of the churches had winged reptilian gargoyles put on them, <laughs> including um, something that's really...